Hello YouTubers, it is of course me, Trollface the Man, and welcome back to another video where I look at random junk. Well, hopefully not junk, but we will see as always. This is a 50 watt, supposedly, a 50 watt UV floodlight from Amazon for a pretty steep price of $60. But we all know Quality is what really matters, not necessarily price, necessarily. I've already opened this up, I've taken it out, it was wrapped in a bag and I just plugged it in momentarily to make sure that it actually, you know, works because otherwise that would be a real big letdown to start a video and just say, ooh, too bad, no v UV entertainment for you. But it does work. So this is the light, I said it actually came decently packaged. The cord was wrapped up. I already unwrapped it. And with a instruction manual. This is from Amazon. It cost me uh, $52 because it's normally supposed to be $60. And then it was a Amazon Prime coupon, I think, I got it with. However, you can buy some of these similar looking models that claim to be 50 watts for half the price, usually $30. Once again, I can't speak for their quality, so I, I really don't, uh, don't know if that means that you're saving money or you're wasting money. This right here, I could tell, should theoretically be a 50 watt LED uh, floodlight just based off of the chip count on it. Uh, so a word of advice, if you see chips about this size, typically they're one watt chips. And by actually physically counting the chips, you can approximate the Usually, you can approximate the amount of uh, wattage the device is going to be for. Uh, you multiply the top row by the side row and you get the area, which in this case correlates to the amount of chips we have. The other thing about it though, is that there's going to be losses in the power supply. So, does it actually physically draw 50 watts? Well, theoretically, if these chips were 50 watts worth and you take in the power supply losses and stuff for converting the 120 volts AC to DC to work with the LEDs or uh, the 240 volt AC to DC to work with these LEDs, which this supposedly is a, it claims 100 volt to 265 volts uh, capable, then we shouldn't actually see slightly higher than 50 watt consumption on this. So let's try it out. I got a cheap power meter that tells us voltage and wattage. And I got this plug. I can plug in here. Ooh. Yeah, that's, ooh, I can feel, that's roasting my hands. I can feel the potentially adverse UV effects of that already. A 55 watt draw. I'd have to say that that's pretty good. Definitely within their specifications. Um, it would make sense about one watt per LED and a few watts for losses in the power supply. So that's pretty good. The other thing they claim is um, this is 395 nanometers, which I sure would hope so because if it was something like 365 nanometer, then that would be retina searing skin cancer causing fun but uh yeah this looks about 395 nanometers they claim an ip65 water rating which means that it uh can't be submersed in water but it should be able to withstand pressure jets of so and so pressure so like if you're spraying it down with the hose or rain uh the construction for this is pretty simple uh, it looks like just a few screws on the back. So why don't we actually take this apart and see what type of ceiling they have in here. Then I'll show what the light looks like toward the end of the video. I don't like that. Almost can use it like an instrument. Anyways, uh, yeah, it seems like for that price, whatever that is should probably be properly mounted down and not free floating. But, uh, you know, so I see a couple of screws back here and they're Phillips. They're not even tamper resistant. There's one thing I like doing is taking things apart. 
So I'll take these screws out, which will take me just one second. So uh, you, you might know, uh, if you're more of a long-term fan of this channel, that I collect uranium glass, which is a special type of glass that was typically made during the Depression era, uh, but it actually has uh, history even before that. And that uh, it's made with uranium, it's slightly radioactive, and has a special, special property of glowing under UV light. So I was figuring that that would be a good use for this glass, is if I do a display cabinet, that I can have this UV glass, or excuse me, this UV light in the, the glass cabinet case. Uh, and the other thing is, is that Halloween's coming up here very shortly. And what I did last year is I actually made a custom UV lights using some ch cheap chips I got on eBay. And I set it up on the porch and kids loved it because the they a lot of their costumes for us, which they didn't know about. And they're like, oh, look at how cool that is. And I was figuring I can set this up this year. Now, one thing is, is that they call this a, a grow light. I don't know what type of plants specifically grow using UV. And a lot, and they'll, a lot of them will use red and blue and not really much green, but I, I never heard of a UV grow light. Maybe? But anyways, I'm just gonna set this up. Uh, maybe kids will enjoy it. Ooh. Okay. Oh, I don't like that. There's it's already just broken stuff, broken pieces of plastic floating around in there. Let me uh, tame that exposure a little bit. I'm gonna be planning on buying a new camera here pretty soon that hopefully shouldn't really have so much of an issue with the uh, uh, contrast levels uh, being, what would it be considered, better, better, can't think of it right now. Anyways, yeah, so that's, that's, I found out what was floating around. Uh, it is this beefy power supply that looks like it's supposed to be glued in here. And the adhesive has actually, and this might even be thermal compound. It looks like it's probably thermal compound to help wick it to the, the outer casing here. Uh, and that has came completely loose, which it definitely shouldn't have, because that means it's floating around now, and it's not thermally conducting, which means this thing might get a little bit too hot. That might not fully be the manufacturer's fault. It could have suffered a particularly rough time in shipping, but I do plan on contacting the manufacturer and being, basically saying, hey, what the hey? Especially seeing as I can see that there's a there's a screw here, a little screw thing, as part of this. Ooh, let me just brighten that up a bit. A little screw thing on the plastic there for actually mounting it down. Oh, that's what broke off the other side. So they could theoretically have just put holes in here and then drilled uh, and mounted this directly to that back metal along with a little thermal compound. The thing is grounded which is actually surprising for most of these things um, because a lot of times they just skip the grounding process altogether, which is very important. I can see a silicon ceiling ring around the outside here, and they do have this cord coming in. I'm sorry, it's dealing with the dark colors and then the light colors means I have to adjust the camera a lot because I can't trust the auto exposure. Uh, there is like some silicon, either a ring or, yeah, it looks like some type of ring, ceiling ring for this cord here, which is, is a good indicator that more than likely it should be able to withstand some water exposure. I don't like is that they have these wires connected with these quick connectors, which, sorry, I'm going a little zoom crazy here which is just a connector that if you flip up this plastic piece, the wire can be pulled out and then you can put the wire in and then clamp it down and that's supposed to hold it into place. See how those just flip right up. That does not seem like the most secure connection, but uh, theoretically, maybe it's fine. 
Let's go a little bit deeper with this. And take off this. I don't think that uh, there's really a whole lot more to see. It's just an enclosed LED driver. This says model LL2250PF, 50 watt driver. Does say that it's able to support input of 120 through two, or excuse me, 100 through 265 volts at 50 or 60 hertz, and that it outputs 27 through 36 volts. Uh, that's a little bit strange. It should, having a, a little higher output than potentially what it should, unless there's some type of adjustment, which I, I don't see an adjustment. Uh, yeah, there's no there's no like adjustment on there unless they can adjust it externally with some type of resistor, but I don't see a resistor. So 27 through 36 volts could be quite a, uh, a tolerance difference when it comes to LEDs. So theoretically, maybe the 27 for if you're on 100 volts and then the 36 if you're on 240, which means that the LEDs could potentially be being overdriven. I should test to see, I don't have a 240 volts Ooh, sorry about that. I don't have a 240 volt uh, output anywhere, but I could see what the output is with my 120 by just uh, touching the lines here. So yeah, that's that. This is just adhered directly to the aluminum. I'm assuming with some thermal compound. I'd really hope so. Uh, and that's a super simple construction. It is decently thick aluminum. Uh, let's, let me grab a power meter real quick. All right, I got, oh, excuse me. I got this little dinky one here. Uh, it does go up to 300 volts, either DC or pulsing DC. Oh, so impressive. And what I'll do is I'm going to plug this light in and I'm just going to touch these connections here uh, going into the, the chipset and see what it reads. Oh, geez. That is not good for my eyes. I tried looking at it to plug it in and ooh, uh, I don't even know. I, Uh, there we go. I'm just gonna... Ooh, that didn't work either. Okay. I don't want to put something on there that's gonna, like, cause it to melt. Where are my sunglasses at? You don't forget this. I know I just had a pair of sunglasses around. Where are they? Aha! You see, I got my brand new super stylish dollar store sunglasses ah that is much better okay so if i touch these connections here it says 30 volts which once again uh if it's 27 volts for a hundred uh volt input then 27 volts would make sense for the 120 volts. It does say that it has a continuous uh, amperage output of 1.5 amps. Okay, so we're gonna do the math here. So if we have uh, 27 volts at 1.5 amps, that is 40.5 watts. If we have 30, at 1.5 amps, then it's 45 watts. Okay. Now if we have uh, 36 at 1.5 amps, then we're talking about 54 watts. So a difference on the lowest being 27, 27 times 1.5, 27, times ooh, times 1.5 being 40.5 and what was the uh, 36 
36 times 1.5 being 54. So almost a 14 watt difference between theoretically, if you're on the full 265 volts versus the uh, 100 volts or approximately a 10 watt difference if you go from 120 to the 265, if that's how this works. So I guess that's probably within a pretty fair specification. Um, but yeah, super simple construction. It, my main complaint is just this, but it looks like it should be able to resist water and stuff. There's even ridges in there to hold this in place. So I'm gonna reassemble this and let's, uh, let's see how, how powerful the UV is uh, in the dark. Oh, so I figured I would mention too while I have this. This is actually fairly thick glass uh, for the element that goes on the front. It's like fairly heavy, uh, thick stuff, so it's not cheap plastic too, which just having the glass there, I, I don't really think, in my opinion, adds much to the actual value of a product. I, I really would rather have something be plastic and then be much cheaper. Uh, because they should theoretically perform very similar when it comes to like optical transparency and stuff but I guess yeah you know if you really want a glass it does explain part of the, the higher cost uh, and it also just kind of adds weight to it which some people determine that quality which you really shouldn't but in most cases Ooh. So yeah, I'm just gonna get this remounted. But before I do, uh, let's see if there's any juicy stuff inside of these instruction pages like I so oftentimes find with uh, poorly translated Chinese manuals. Mm, lifespan, 50,000 hours. Material, aluminum, working environment, negative 20 through 40. Specifications, okay, that's actually a different one. They have specifications for 10 watt, 20 watts, 50 watt, okay, here we go. Let's give it the same working standard. So this is supposed to be the cool psychedelic LED, or excuse me, uh, fluorescent effects you can get out of it. Caution and warning. The waterproof of, okay. Caution and, caution and warning. The waterproof rating of the lamp is IP65, but the online switch is not waterproof. So the switch doesn't have any water resistance to it? That seems... Extremely bright. Please do not look directly at the light for a long time. I would say even for a short period of time. To protect the light, please cut off power when there is li a lightning strike. To protect the light, please cut off power when there is a lightning strike. So you gotta wait right as it strikes and then switch it off really quick. You know, just... Oh, oh, is it... Oh! And you can turn it back on, I guess, because it's only during, uh, or excuse me, when there is a lightning strike. So you only have to do it while there's a lightning strike. Please do not plug the power cord with wet hands. Do not wrap this product with cloth or things like that when it is working. I mean, that is fair. It will insulate it. Uh, out of all the manuals I've seen, uh, they kept it short, they kept it sweet, and for the most part, it is understandable, <laughs> unlike some of the ridiculous ones I've, I've seen before. I can feel the warmth from here, like not even joking. It's very close. You know, since I got this up. So here's an example of uranium glass. This is one of my favorite pieces. It's a little top hat. And uh, it gets this sort of greenish yellow color from the uranium in it. Once again, it is slightly radioactive and it has the unique property. This is a almost dead apparently, LED flashlight, UV LED flashlight I made. It uses a supposedly three watt chip uh, that I got off of eBay. I made it using an old flashlight. And if I point it at this, you can see that it, it fluoresces green, which is really neat. Same thing with this uranium glass vase. Uh, as you can see, it fluoresces green. I got this from the Salvation Army for $8. It's a piece of history, but I can only for us a very small area with this flashlight. Let's try with the 50 watt floodlight. Oh wait. Oh yes. 
that that definitely fluoresces uh, quite a bit. Let's try it with the big old vase. Ooh, that is even too powerful for the camera. Let me just knock back the exposure. A lot. Like, a lot, a lot. There we go. That's more like it. So yeah, that uh, definitely covers its grounds in terms of uh, uranium glass. All right, so this is my messy kitchen. Uh, the camera is about 15 feet away from that other wall there. And I just wanted to show how well this can fluoresce stuff. What we have over here is a bunch of fluorescent objects, including manganese glass that I have, uranium glass, and just some other things that fluoresce. I have fully charged my flashlight now. Um, like I said, this is supposed to be, they say three watts. I don't know if it actually is a three watt chip. I would say probably not, but uh, from here, it doesn't really do nothing. If I get closer, I hope you appreciate my crazy, crazy hair. You can see that it fluoresces. Oh, let me actually move this right here. You can see that it fluoresces. I use these to find uh, this light to find uranium glass in garage sales and Salvation Armies and stuff. But yeah, so definitely fluoresces. But from all the way back here, not so much. Let's bust out the big light and see what, what it looks like from all the way back here in brightness. So, oh yeah, we are definitely getting fluorescence from all the way back here. But this room is actually fairly bright, so let's test it out in the dark. this over here, turn off this light, turn off this light, and turn off this light. And so this is my UV flashlight. I'm going to have to adjust the exposure a little bit to make it more true to life brightness wise. There we go. So you can see that uh, my UV light fluoresces okay at this distance. Get closer. Definitely has better fluorescence. As I get farther away, fluorescence drops off quite a bit. Still isn't bad. Uh, better than most of the ones you can buy online. Let's try the 50 watt light now, shall we? So we're just gonna flip this on. Well, bam and ooh, yeah, that is definitely bright. Let me adjust it to be more about what I see. Keep in mind that your eyes do automatically adjust to different brightness levels. So going based off of a camera isn't perfect because automatic exposure and stuff, which is why I'm doing manual exposure. But yeah, you can see all the way back here, that definitely does fluoresce pretty good, particularly there's a dog toy there with fluorescence on it that uh, has a really solid glow to it. So I would say that those pictures that they were showing before, probably not too, too exaggerated. The viewing angle of this is supposed to be 120 degrees. doesn't do much in this uh, this grand exposure so I'm looking forward to seeing how this will work on Halloween even if I have some light in the room I'm gonna flip on this main light here you can see that UV exposure is still pretty good and that's with right above the camera there's three 800 lumen LED lights on so about 1800 lumens, wait, what? 3800 lumen, so about 2400 lumens right now above the camera, and you can still see the fluorescent pretty decently versus the flashlight where you can hardly see it at all. So, yeah, pretty, pretty decently impressive, I have to say so. So, yeah, assuming that uh, this light actually lasts like it should, 
and assuming that that power supply coming loose, which is something that's very fixable by me but might not be very fixable by a normal consumer, was just something that happened by freak accident uh, during shipping. I think this light is pretty solid for what you're getting. Uh, this is some uranium glass Czechoslovakian beads that I have. Um, normal light, they're just uranium glass, kind of green, and then they fluoresce great uh, under UV light. But assuming that uh, this lasts like it should, uh, it looks like that the water, uh, that it's decently sealed. It looks like that uh, the wattage is as it claims, and that it seems like a pretty solid choice. My only thing is, is that I would expect a product like this to cost more, like 30, 40 bucks. But then again, you buy something like this in a store, and I wouldn't be surprised if you see it for like 80 or even more money, because uh, we're so used to this online, or at least I'm so used to this online shopping, you know, uh, selection that it's very easy to, to forget that stores just in general cost a lot more. So that's the Czechoslovakian. This is uh, Czechoslovakian beads. This is one of my favorite. It's manganese glass. And this is, I heard, what's called Viking fire glass. And it is UV reactive, doesn't have uranium in it. So it's manganese. And like, it doesn't do much unless you catch UV light the right way. And then look at that. It's like a, a glowing ember, even this whole thing right here. You just turn it the right way and yeah, I love that. So very cool. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed the video, please remember to hit that like button, to subscribe if you haven't already, and to leave a comment. I always appreciate it. And also, if you're interested in buying this specific light, I will leave a Amazon link in the description below where you can pick it up. I, like I said, it's not a bad choice. It seems like it's... It's grounded, which is more than most of these lights. It is sealed. Uh, the power supply is rated for what it's rated for, and it has the claimed output, unlike some of the other ones that I've seen that I could very easily tell would not do what they're supposed to do. So I think it's pretty good overall. So yeah, thank you guys for watching, and bye!